Hi, I'm Sam Burt from samplelibreview.com. This is what you'll see when you first launch Ferrum. It's the first of a whole bunch of NKIs that will be going through. This video will serve partly as a review and partly as a first look as well because I haven't had a whole lot of time with this, maybe 30 minutes or so and a little flick through the manual. I'll play through some sounds from the first two patches and then we'll have a closer look at the GUI. As you can hear, it's ferocious, it's big, it's a whole lot of fun to play, it's epic and hits really hard. This particular patch works excellently with synth, sound design, orchestral, hybrid type cues as it just punches through and it's highly processed. This next patch is slightly different. Got a bit more of a natural feel. I'm going to bring the volume down to 6 dB. It's pretty hot out of the box, and especially when we're playing multiple keys at the same time, those sounds really start adding up. Many of the patches are divided across the keyboard. We're using different colours there to designate different types of sounds. So obviously, we've got the red ones here being pretty low, subby type things. The orange ones being your main hits, and then some really dry stuff at the top. We'll have a little look at the GUI, which is really great. It's simple, it's effective, and it's across just three pages. Effects here, rhythms, 
and main. On the main page is where you'll probably be doing most of your work. You've got your mics here. For this one, we don't have loads of mics. Just got a close and then the reverb, which is your contact reverb. Again, dead easy, up and down. To change that, you've got an envelope for each mic. Left and right, solo mute, and you can purge if you need to save RAM, but it's generally quite a low RAM type of instrument. So I don't see that being much of a bum, but it's there if you need it. The best thing though about kind of changing these levels here is to be able to use your little microphone here. As you can see, as I move it back, it automatically adjusts both of them in tandem. As you move it back, it'll also decrease the volume. We can go left to right as well. Excellent way of being able to very quickly put it into a place. This is a, on global at the moment, so it's gonna to apply to every single hit on the keyboard. But we can deactivate that and set it per key. For example, we could have this hit sort of up close and personal. The next one along. But further back, maybe to this side. The next one along. Maybe to the other side. By playing all three, we get that kind of sound where we've got two for the back and a nice stereo image panned out left and right and then another one in the middle. I really like that. It's a great function. We can fix the sound as well, which means that the reverb will stick where it is and we're just playing really with volume here. So the reverb is then controlled over here and you can set it however you like. Backwards and forwards is a volume control for that particular note, or global in this case, as we've got it. Left and right works as expected and as before. With fixed room, this doesn't apply to these patches, but it will apply to the patches where we have a room mic. And that means that the room mic is always kept center, even though we may pan to the left or the right. We'll take them off just as we go along. As you can see, as I'm hitting the keys there, these little boxes light up and these are your round robins. There's up to 16 and it's just great. The round robins are superbly well edited. There's, there's no real duff ones in there, none that I've found so far anyway. And it just gives such amazing realism to have that many. In terms of velocity control, we've got... I'm not sure if they've sampled these with different velocities. I'm suspecting not. I think most of the difference is done by clever filtering and volume. So we do have a definite degree of velocity dependency. It's mainly the round robins that we're talking about. Here, and they can be activated and deactivated just by clicking the boxes. So if there's too many, I don't know why you didn't have too many round robins, but nevertheless, if there's some you don't want, you can just click them. And it'll just play the ones that are selected. Let's go back to the other kit. Mainly just because I think I prefer this one at the moment, so it's more fun to show you on this one. This playback mode here is really excellent. I haven't seen this in other products, and it's really impressive. 
We have the stereo, which is your normal stereo as we've been playing. We can go to mono. And we can go to doubling. The doubling has a slight hass effect in terms of duplicates the sound and delays it by a number of milliseconds here and pans left and right so we get this huge wide effect. This is the same drum sound. It's just super wide, super fat. And I did see a great video that Keith Forest did where they duplicated um, two patches, had one doubling and had one mono. So you get that in your face mono sound and then this huge double, double kind of sound as well. You can change how much it's delayed by right there. You can also change the width. So if you want to, if you want to just close it in a little, easy enough to do. The ensemble is, as you would expect, giving you that feel of a number of people playing that drum. Here you can select how many layers or how many people, should I say, might be playing the drum. You can see we're using all the round robins there at once. This is where the number of round robins really comes in because for each hit, it selects a different group of round robins. So even though we're getting that ensemble feel, it sounds like a different hit every single time. We can go all the way up to 16 players if you like, or if you want it a bit more, just a couple, that's fine. I found when it gets too many, it becomes a little bit muddy and indistinct. I do prefer maybe about eight as your maximum, but that's just a personal thing. This little cog here opens up a bunch of extra parameters we can use to make it even more um, the hits all more different and so we get the feeling potentially of a bigger ensemble. We can vary the, uh, the G tune, the attacks, the velocity range and the volume decrease is quite interesting as well. That helps you counteract the problem of having loads of round robins playing at once and the volume going up so it automatically decreases that. That's really excellent. It's worth pointing out at this point that we have a bunch of snapshots here which do also relate to uh, this ensemble and different patches here, like the ensemble in Dublin. So we can directly get to those if we want to by going to hybrid perk double. And all the work is done for us. And again, you can go to ensemble and it automatically sorts all your players out. If we go to the stage version, that comes into play and each key is different on a different stage, which is which will take some setting up and it's all done for you, which is excellent. These are really useful snapshots. We can make it super dry. As you have back to stereo there, we've got slow attacks and reverbs. We'll come back to them actually, because I'm jumping ahead of myself slightly. Uh, Let's get back to a dry hit. And this is where the envelopes really come into their own here. 
So we can deactivate the envelope here. We can make it global or per drum. And we've got your standard ADSR type of stuff there as well. So for the dry hits, what they've done is basically they've, uh, they've tweaked the envelope. So we can see when we go to a different key, which has that preset, the envelope has changed to give the impression of a dry hit. The one slight drawback to this library is that your main hits, for these patches at least, have kind of baked in reverb and there's only one mic, there's just that close mic here. But you can do quite a fair bit with these ADSRs. Which is really useful, especially if you want to combine drier hits with bigger effects. The retrigger means that other round robins will cut off the previous round robin, so it's a slightly kind of cleaner sound. Let's go back to, uh, let's have a look at. Go to an ensemble and try that. It's a little bit subtle on that patch, but it generally kind of cleans up. We don't get that overhang of the previous bunch of round robins hanging over. And the last thing really to talk about on this page is the velocity curve. So this is an easy way to configure it so it plays better with your keyboard if you've got hammer action keys or you've got something that's hardly got any um, you know, good way of altering your velocity uh, this is where you want to be diving in move over to rhythms, the rhythm page this is excellent as well with plenty of inbuilt stuff to be playing with So easy to make your own rhythms. You can start with the basic ones here, and it goes all the way up to God. Just so many. We've got some crazy ones as well. When we come to the percussion stuff, they'll be they'll be more relevant, I think. But also at dark three, super complex. There's too much to go through in terms of going through each thing here about and, 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 and what it does. Safe to say, you can do a fair bit. Each one of these can then be uh, chopped into, into component sections like that. And we have a whole bunch of different effects that can be sequenced as well, such as pan, filter, and the pitch. We can get some pretty mad effects if we want them. We can easily change the tempo, we can humanise it as well, so we get a little bit of a ran more random offset. We can change the number of steps down here, so quickly make your pattern a lot shorter. By putting the plus and minus there, we can make each one have a number of different subdivisions. It's everything you're going to need in the sequencer, really. And it works excellently. You can play a whole bunch of keys at the same time. Instant, epic, massiveness. I love it. Really great fun. 
uh, we can then go to reset all. Okay, and we're back to the starting point. So that's the rhythm section. The effects section comes up with a whole bunch of options to add your own effects. We've already got saturation because we selected this snapshot here, the Ensemble 3 players, which comes up with saturation loaded in it. And there's some great presets here for various special effects. Some fairly radical. Huge amount of reverb there. I like the way they've got little icons. Often the effects in some of the contacts are very much an afterthought, but there's some nice work going on there to instantly see what we've got to play with. By clicking each one, we can then get all the parameters up for that. I won't bother going through each one of those. It's going to be a little bit laborious if I did so. But safe to say it's well featured. Just put plus there and we can add your phaser. Plus there, we can add... Cathode tube, I think it is, not an actual cat. And it's easy enough to take them in and out of commission as well. And you've got on offs. You can save and load your own presets. And easy enough to bypass everything as well. It's everything you want in the presets, just dead simple, nicely laid out. And the GUI, it's worth mentioning at this point, is a vast improvement on some of the previous Keep Frauds. Not that they were bad, they were good, they were just quite complex. Anyone who's played with some of the Izerx stuff will be familiar with what I'm talking about here. Super complex and powerful, no doubt, but could be pretty harsh on the eyes and whole lot of squinting going involved to change parameters. They've definitely moved it up a notch with Ferrum. I love this interface. It's just, it's simple, but it's complex enough to do anything you want. And it's incredibly creative. As you can see, we can go from ensemble players with a, a dark effects preset to something really dry and choppy. That takes us through everything in the GUI that I think is relevant. What we'll do now is have a little look at some of the other sounds that are available in this library. For that, I'm going to go back to Epic Trailer Percussion. Remind ourselves of that one. And there's a whole lot to go through. I'm going to I'll probably zip through these really quite quickly just so this video doesn't become like six hours long or something crazy. This I really like. I must remember to take this down. Otherwise, it's going to be crushing my speakers. It's your natural... I'm not sure what they've sampled here. In fact, I'm not sure what they've sampled of the drums. That's one, one thing I point out, actually, is that this is not a library where you're going to get your kind of... Um, your, your two pans and your grand casses and your toms all separately in, in neat little boxes. I think they've just put everything together and just made massive, huge sounds. And this, I'm not sure how they've done it, but it's a combination of boots, claps, hitting things. That is just, that is big, big clapping and stomping. That sounds like a lot of people, so just for fun, let's have a look.
Let's make an ensemble of the ensemble. Love it. Snare drums. Big and powerful. Loads of bottom end as well for a snare. Have a look at some of these. Now, this is where we can get to play a lot with the envelopes, etc. So those taking the, a lot of the attack off. Super soft. Good maybe in the early stages of um, a trailer or when you're kind of doing an action cue but you don't want it to be too kind of in your face. You get that big sound but not with that kind of crazy huge attack. There's a whole bunch of rolls involved as well. These are done by the rhythm, so it's easy enough to start morphing this a little bit as well. So if you kind of wanted to build it a little bit bigger there, maybe you didn't want quite a big as hit. It's a really cool way of doing it. By changing the tempo, we can make it. Quicker and slower, in a cinch. Really great. And we've got a load of drum enhancer type stuff. Some of these, it's worth noting now, because I won't be going through every single snapshot on every single NKI. It's worth, when you're um, having a look in the NKIs, the snapshots can be different for each particular patch. So experiment, have a look, see what's going on. Some stuff's done by effects, some stuff's done by envelopes, some stuff's done by your rhythms. Depends what you're going for. But again, it just make it just this library is so flexible. That's what's just excellent about it. It sounds great, just used conventionally, like making massive, badass sounds, but also really cool for this type of stuff. That is just crazy punch. There's some compression action going on there. Oh, well, limit and transient. You get the idea. Well, come on, it won't be key for us if there wasn't some massive metallic hits here. Obviously no round robin for these guys, as these are just kind of big hits to punctuate your patterns. So we've got snapshots. Yeah, so we've got... some clever stuff going on. Playable ones. Whoa.
It sounds like these are the trail hits kind of lined up in, in a round robin fashion, which is good. Sometimes you want a hit, but you want it to change and be a slightly different hit, but not totally different every time across maybe, say, four bars, and this enables that to happen with ease. Kind of the same hit, but then you've got round robin of a hit, which is great, because too much of it just sounds repetitive. Punch your stuff layered when you just need that extra bit of beef to a sound. That's where these are going to come in, big style. It's generally a really highly processed library for the main, but we do have a few natural things like this. entering they're already pre-panned across the stereo field and we do have now the control of all the different mics in a room this is where this little grid comes in so well we can kind of instantly change the different relationships of these four faders just using one simple mic. Pretty nice. Anvils, industrial door impacts, good if you want that kind of foley type of effect. Good for horror type of sound them. The symbols. This is, it's, I mean, it's called Ferrum. And when I originally saw some marketing material come out of this quite a few months ago, it was kind of perceived as a metallic library. They've changed it slightly to be a modern trailer percussion, but it does have quite a high emphasis of metallic type of sounds, which are super, super useful for hybrid type of music especially trailers, which need that metallic, transient, cutting high-frequency sound to beat through. Probably some presets for the rhythms here. We'll have a look, see if we can find any. We've got categories here, which is handy. Maybe an action.
There's something I'm not doing right here. I'm not sure what it is. Ah, we need to... Okay, obviously. Take that off. Some simple swells. Useful stuff. Heavy process ones. It is the same. Oh, sorry, gone too far. Same sample set, just keep forest of Cotton of Town processing them. Bells and shakers. Oops. I'm using a small keyboard here, so if you see me going up there on the white keys, it's because I'm not sure where I am and I'm trying to go up and down with using these little octave buttons. Nice. Definitely cool for kind of keeping your motion going. Especially if we get to some sort of quicker stuff. Finger bells here. Nicely recorded. Let's see what we got for mics for these. I've just got a close, so we're kind of stuck with what we got, but you know what? It sounds cool. Just go with it. Metallic Foley. Okay, so this is, I think, where they've sampled every sound in the office, and then they've gone to the kitchen drawer and got out the knives and forks. There's definitely a trend for doing Foley type of percussion, and this would definitely help with that. Sounds like a typewriter or something. You get the idea. A whole lot of sounds. A whole lot of fun editing them, I'm sure. Now, we got the same thing going on with that, so exactly the same principles apply. We can create something quite complex. You'll see here, doubling kind of really comes in because most of these samples are mono anyway. I mean, that is just, I know it's, it may not seem much, but it is just, as a workflow thing, it is so damn handy to kind of have a sound that's mono and normally you'd have to kind of, you know, put a bunch of plugins on it. You can just do it literally with one click and there you are. And you still have control to make it slightly different if you need to. Okay, various metals. So there's all sorts in here. I kind of got myself lost a little bit as I started going through it. So it's slightly less foley than the previous patch we've just seen. And again, they're all kind of mono, but we can... Sounds like a bike bell. I like the categories thing, that's, that's pretty nice. Europe, that would suggest kind of more traditional orchestration maybe. Let's try tambourine. D 
decent. Hope it's gone too far. Bear with me when I come back. Very smart as universal. This is where the NKS got a little bit confusing for me because I'm kind of like, how many various metals are we talking about here? And they all just sound like metal sounds. Good metal sounds, but... Okay, so these are a bit nicer classified. It's handy having them all in one place. Mid ringing. Put it this way if you can't find a metal sound after buying ferrum, then just forget about it because there's so much in here. They're really nicely recorded, really nicely edited, super playable. These are really good hyper programs. Um, I've used that kind of technique in a few trailer cues of my own. When you want it to just get super intense, but you don't want to kind of have a traditional hi hat kind of playing anything, but you want some maybe super quick, even on um, you know sixteenth notes, thirty second notes. These were excellent. You need round robins and need them to be dead short and sharp, and this has it. So they're excellent for that kind of thing. If you've got rhythms and we'd kind of, let's see if we've got a really fast rhythm here. Actions. Complex action. Yes, exactly. So. You need the right sound, you know. To play the rhythms. That doesn't sound great, obviously, by itself, but layered with all the stuff. That's where it's at. Let's have a look at... We're getting to the end here, folks. Thanks for sticking with us. Mute with stuff. Various models percussive. <laughs> I don't know what that means. They all sound percussive to me. Maybe less tinny, if you like. I don't know. I mean, the recording session with this must have just taken forever because we've got so many sounds and then we've got all around Robins of them as well. Amazing. Very smell specific. That's my only slight grumble with this line, because by the time you get to the the metals, NKIs, it's kind of confusing. They all sound great, and they all sound quite similar. They've tried to split them up. And they need to, because there's so many, but it's a, you can kind of get lost in it a bit. Ah, this is cool. Let's have a look, see what we've got here. Yeah, it's nice creative use of filters, delays, etc. TikTok's so super, seems to be super short and sharp. Artificial shakers. This is going to be a really handy library in a panic or a deadline. But it also has the flexibility, if you've got time to do it, to dive into your effects, dive into all your rhythm stuff and make it really unique to yourself as well.
really great sounds, really unique, super processed. Keep Forest have got that, they've got a sound of their own, which is kind of a, a, a little bit kind of scooped with huge bottom end, nice tinkly top end on the on the on the stuff that's got a kind of full frequency spectrum at least. They really they really bring all that out. Attention to detail on this library is just superb. The samples are the best quality. And all these extra things on the GUI, you know, this this doubling thing, the little placement module here for your reverbs, the fact that everything can be global or per key, the rhythms with a whole raft of different rhythms are, again, nicely divided into categories. You know, the way we've just got simple stuff like your tempos and your frequency, your human eyes, it's just there, easy to use. This replicated on here, little things, but things that can get missed in other libraries. And again, a really neat, nice looking effect chain. And I think that probably wraps it up. Yeah, because we're back to where we started. which is probably the patch that, for me, will get most use. Yeah, it's fun. More than anything, you know, this library is just super fun to play. And, you know, making music, it's a job for a lot of us, but it's also got to be fun. And this is going to give you so much of that. And it's just going to work, I think, in a number of different uses, especially for trailer music, especially for, you know, action films, that type of thing, action TV programs whatever you're scoring that needs that hyper edgy powerful drum sound ferrum has got it thanks for checking out this video i'd love to know what you think about this library is it something that might work for your music and in your own compositions comment below share your thoughts please like share and subscribe we always love your support and be sure to visit samplelibraryreview.com for more news reviews and our weekly deal compressor